Dear students, today we're going to talk about occurrence and distribution of soil microorganisms. Now, where do they uh, live? What are their ecological niches and especially environmental samples? When we talk about the environment, it is usually looked at a vast uh, depository of microorganisms. They interact with each other and they also interact with their environment. Uh, well, they can interact with other plants, with uh, other uh, animals, with other microorganisms, with the biotic and the abiotic environment surrounding them. We will a uh, little bit briefly describe how do they exist in soil, in air, and in water, and how do they interact with these environments uh, and their populations in particular. Well, if you look at the atmosphere, this is the simplest and it is the relatively uniform and constant in composition. With, with, from a microbial point of view, there's not much to feed on in the atmosphere. So there's a lack of nutrients, it's a lack of water, and thus its major role for microorganisms that it's a media for transporting the spores and it's a mean of dispersal of those microorganisms. There's a decrease in number, there's a general decrease in number of microorganisms as we increase the uh, uh, altitude from the uh, surface of the earth. Most are present as spores of fungi. In the aquatic environment, as, as we describe in either fresh water or in marine water, there are major sites for microbial growth with more than 70% of the Earth's surface is covered by oceans. But in the aquatic environment, growth is generally sl slow because of uh, fluctuating temperature and lower temperature on the most of the sea water uh, in, in the globe. It is below four degrees Celsius. And there's also uh, various degrees of uh, organics that microorganisms can feed on so it's generally uh, not very diverse. Whereas, as we can see in the soil, it's uh, the general description of the soil is the peripheral portion of the earth crust, which has physical, chemical, and biological properties distinctly different from the underlying material, as a consequence of the integrated effect of climate and organisms acting upon the geologic material. It's has an important uh, mixture of organic matter and minerals. It is this unique environment is generally said that it can support life. With a soil that represents the most varied and heterogeneous environment for microorganisms, it has the three phases like the solid phase, the liquid phase, and the gaseous phases. The solid phase has a complex of day uh, material and mineral and organic matter. The remaining volume is the pore space that is usually filled with either water containing soluble organic and orga inorganic material and the soil atmosphere, which is saturated with water and less oxygen and more CO2 than the atmosphere above the soil. When we'll, we will describe how the soil air is a little bit different from the atmospheric air. The environment of a microbial cell in soil is in fact a microhabitat. The conditions may be different from those in the bulk soil. For instance, a cell growing on a piece of decaying root in the soil may have an excess of carbon and nitrogen, while the soil, the bulk soil, may be nutrient deficient. And so what I need you to keep in mind is that different conditions may prevail in microhabitat it may not be um, a, uni a homogeneous system throughout the soil. It may not be homogeneous as it moves from one point to another or as we move in depth from the surface below the soil. For example, aerobes may grow on the outside of a soil crump or an aggregate or microbial films whereas anaerobic microbes or anaerobic processes uh, try to evade high levels of oxygen, so they try to occupy the center. And the number of microbes, they decrease with the soil depth. As the soil is a rich medium, a good habitat for microbial growth, each one gram of garden soil, healthy soil, may contain up to 10 to the power of seven bacteria. 
and about 5 meters of fungal hyphae and it's a vast uh, a biomass coming in the um, um, microorganisms. So uh, when we talk about biomass and so if we, if we can assume that one acre could contain almost about 6,000 kilogram wet weight of microbial biomass and uh, so that's a, a very good amount of also abundance of carbon in the form of biological material. Most soil activity comes from enzymes and those enzymes they are important for uh, nutrient recycling and other soil processes such as urease enzyme, phosphatases, dehydrogenase and they are major players in um, de degradation of organic material. This is a, a, a schematic of a soil profile. We can see different zones. For, uh, let me see if I can get my pen ready. And so these are the upper zone area here and the zone of maximum alluviation. And then comes the bedrock, which is the parent material where the soil is originally coming from. But please note here that slightly decomposed litter and the layer down beneath it is highly decomposed litter. So there's an, an area where organic matter is mostly concentrated in the upper layer. As we go deeper, there's less organic and less air available, and that would affect the number and distribution of the microorganisms in the soil environment. So this, uh, this is a, an outcome of an experiment where microorganisms have been looked at the soil across the soil profile. Mainly, we're interested in aerobic bacteria, aerobes. We have anaerobes, that those they don't require oxygen, and fungi, and algae. Okay, so here we're talking about prokaryotic cells, and fungi and algae represent eukaryotic cells, and their depth from the uh, surface of the soil. We could note that aerobes, they start up in high numbers, and then they decrease in number as they go deeper in the soil, and that's because the limiting factor will be the availability of oxygen. The same is noted for the anaerobic bacteria. Although they prefer anaerobic systems, so we expect them to see them more and deeper in deeper soils. But the limiting factor here, it's not the, it's not the um, availability of CO2. And they decrease in number because there's less organic material available for their growth. Similar trend of increasing, uh, decreasing number is found for fungi, their aerobes, and they, you can note the, uh, uh, their number is much less than the bacterial number. But when it comes to the cellular biomass, it is, fungi is present uh, very uh, evidently in the soil system. As for algae, the major growth factor for algae is their light, so they drastically decrease as we uh, move towards the deeper soil okay so this is in terms of number we could see that the bacteria are more dominant okay now in terms of size if we can compare gravel size it's about over 2,000 micrometers to sand from 50 to 2,000 silt 2 to 50 micrometers, clay from 0.2 to 2, and it is evident that you can note how close it is to the bacterial size. Many bacteria range within the uh, two, 0.2 to 2 micrometers in size. But the cellular um, organization for fungi is a little bit different. Fungi are eukaryotes, and therefore the cell is a bit larger. And the most smallest of them all are the viruses. Okay, the viruses are the smallest uh, sized organisms. Well, we note that microbes in general feeds on organic material and they can assimilate uh, organics. The organic fraction in the soil comes from decomposing plant material, byproducts from during the decomposition. Also, it comes from decaying microorganisms, microbes who die their uh, cellular compartments is part now of the um, organic matter pool. And it also starts to decompose and it reaches a state where it's, it resists further biological degradation. 
and it is usually referred to as the humic material. It is important to note that a well-formed uh, soil is a well-aggregated soil. So most of the microorganisms are located in the upper soil, commonly found close to the root surface, in dead roots, on soil particles, within the aggregates of the soil particles. Soils that are clayey have much bacteria because of these soils have a lot of small pores. So because they can contain water and retain water and therefore organic material, they become more suitable habitat with more clay, uh, well aggregated. Uh, than sandy soil, which is less suitable habitat for microbial growth. Less suitable because it has less tendency, less ability to withstand, to hold moisture and to hold organic material. And so for the development of a, uh, a good soil, we uh, can note here the role played by bacteria and fungi. Soil aggregates, they're clumps of soil particles that are held together by moist clay, organic matter, gums usually secreted from bacteria and fungi, and the role of fungal hyphae going and twisting around those particles. Those aggregates, they vary in size, the microaggregate and we have macroaggregates. They range from 2 microns to 2 millimeters. The pore spaces between those soil particles and within the aggregates, it's either held, filled with water or with air. And this is also essential for microbial activity within the soil aggregate, containing the nutrients and the organic matter. This is a schematic of the soil aggregate. This is, for example, these are the, uh, the clay particles or the sand or silt. And here we note the, um, the pore spaces in here. Those pore spaces are either filled with air or, or with water. And it has organic matter. And these are black dots here are the microorganisms. <clears throat> so this is an, a macro habitat uh, by itself. Uh, the surface grows microorganisms that are aerobes within the soil as they deplete oxygen. It's also another good environment for anaerobic microorganisms within that microhabitat that they can enjoy feeding on the or organic material. And the organic material, as long as it is held within the aggregate, it is contained, okay? It is less prone to degradation as it is exposed to the air and for fast degradation by aerobic microorganisms. And here, I want you to know the importance of bacteria and fungi in the formation of soil aggregates using two ways, using bacteria polysaccharides as gum and the electrostatic charge between the bacteria and the clay surfaces as they can attract each other. The role of fungi is also evident through the uh, fungal hyphae that can get through and diminish and cross-link the soil particles and <clears throat> also the polysaccharides produced and mycorrhizae are also very important in this process. It's a type of fungi that links also plants when root and fungal in the soil. This is a schematic here. We can see this aggregate and this aggregate. They're all linked through the fungal hyphae here in the middle. And so that's how we can tell you that the fungal hyphae are important for soil aggregation. Another schematic of the uh, soil aggregate, you can see all the various uh, um, components on the, as we previously described. The water, is, we said, is important. It is important for the adhesion and cohesion um, processes. Um, in the other factor, in the ability of microorganisms to acquire that water through the water potential, and um, therefore it is crucial for microorganism survival. The air content, on the other hand, is a little bit different between the air and the soil. And so for major uh, elements of uh, in air, most major gases is mostly nitrogen, followed by oxygen, and then lately uh, the carbon dioxide. As you note here, the nitrogen is similar within the air environment and the soil environment. But when it comes to oxygen, it is less available to 
I rows between 20 to 18. If it's uh, less than 5 or less than 1, it, the area becomes anaerobic, and anaerobic microorganisms start to prevail. The other thing to note here is the concentration of carbon dioxide. As more oxygen is consumed, more CO2 is released, and therefore the concentration is about 10 times higher in the soil system of CO2 than it is in the air. And that's also the concentration range of CO2 in the soil system. Here, if we, this is a contour map for the aggregate. As you see, this aggregate, this is the case, uh, first case and the second scenario here. We have a contour where the concentration of oxygen is around 21 on the outside, 15, 10, 5, and about 1 and 0 in the middle. So we could see that within Within, the, um, within the, the aggregate itself, there are varying microhabitats. On the surface, we get aerobes. In the middle, we get anaerobic activity. And then the soil, even on the surface of the soil, if it's well aggregated, then we could see an activity of microorganisms, anaerobes, uh, in the center of the, of the aggregate. Well, the soil is very dynamic, and here is an illustration where um, water and air are kind of uh, affect the survival of microorganisms. If we have, this is the percentage of water-filled pore spaces in relation to relative microbial activity. And here we could note that this is the 10, 20, 30 percent of the pores in the aggregates, they are filled with water. It means that if this is 30% filled with water, then it's 70% filled with air. 40% filled with water, 60% filled with air. Organisms. Therefore, soil, they affect microorganisms, as we said, with water, the distribution, aeration, and the compaction. Also, the compact soil it affects the water and air movement and therefore affects the microbial survival in the soil. On the other hand, we need to note that the microorganisms also affect their soil surrounding with aggregation, with uh, um, organic matter transformation, and the chemistry also of the soil would be affected. Thank you very much.